Hello! I'm back in my house without a dog. Um, the whole Squish gang is present. Humphrey, Trey, and Jason. Uh, also, Jaden's here. First, I want to go through some housekeeping stuff again, like I did last time. Uh, thank you so much on the love on my last video. That was really fun. <laughs> Um, I really like making videos like this and I'm looking forward to doing it more in the future. Um, also, I'm going to attempt to not really adjust audio in hopes I don't get that like um, clicking kind of thing or if it's that that's bothering people, I will also try to stop doing that. Um, some of the things I do are compulsive habits, especially when I'm a little bit anxious, I tend to kind of stutter and stuff. So today, we're talking about James Charles. <laughs> I would talk about James Charles because opposite to Gabby Hanna, James Charles identifies as a man. So there's a whole different approach to rhetoric when you're not female, due to the fact that men were favorable in rhetoric and education throughout all of history. First things first, we got some new terminology and some new kind of stuff to throw in, right? Because obviously, like I said, I focused last time on feminist rhetoric, this time I can't because James Charles is not a woman. Rhetoric's purpose in general is to allow people to discern what is probably true. So when someone is trying to convince you of something, when there's two opposite sides, for example, I messaging minors and the minors themselves, you are trying to pick who is right through the argument that is presented. So that is just the generalized purpose of rhetoric through Scott's rhetorical theory, who is a famous uh, rhetoric writer for contemporary rhetoric. It's, that's just a nice clear basis of what modern rhetoric is like. Now, in contrast to modern rhetoric, some formal historical rhetorical definitions still hold. Uh, for example, the importance of ethos, pathos, and logos. And everyone, that's like the very stereotypical, like, I know rhetoric, uh -huh, eh. <laughs> I know the triangle, like, that's like the first thing you learn in your introduction course when you're like 16, 17 years old. Here, that's important because James Charles has a very consistent mix of the three aspects that create an important standard for rhetoric and create kind of a personality that people can kind of believe. And this is how he was able to get out of everything back in 2019. I am going to do this through an angle of rhetorical criticism. And rhetorical criticism is essentially just dissecting the value of the argument that is presented. I did the same thing in the Gabby Hanna video, but I did more feminist criticism, which was a little bit more in my wheelhouse because that's what I tend to kind of lean into. And also because I myself identify as a woman and I practice rhetoric obviously for my courses and, and on a daily day basis as everybody does, you know, when I I try to barter with my boyfriend to not do the dishes and convince him that I contribute other ways. That's an example of just basic day-to-day -day rhetoric. Same thing as going to the store, negotiating prices, if you want sales, stuff like that. But here I need to evaluate on a more broad view because men were favored in rhetoric throughout all of history. James Charles also, unlike a lot of other popular YouTubers, doesn't really like talk down to women in the same way. So, which is interesting, he doesn't talk down, he kind of just deters. So we'll get into that after, where the ethos, pathos, and logos comes in. But first, you have to look at the stereotypes of YouTubers in their apologies and in their statements, right? So typically, a YouTuber is considered someone who is disorganized, uh, a dumb kid, college student, or college student age man, a la Tana Mojo, David Dobrik, you know, those kind of younger vloggers, um, Gabby Hanna in the heyday, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, that kind of thing. What's up guys, I'm here with Tana. <laughs> you may know her from possibly having sex with her, or you may know her from YouTube. But let's not forget how you got here. <sighs> yeah, you so typically when you look at somebody who is a YouTuber, they tend to have more of just kind of a outward personality and that's what they strive for and that's what they go with. A lot of them drop out of school and James Charles was not like that at all. There's a lot of videos of him mentioning 
and it seems credible this thing is the probably true thing kind of comes back into play here where he mentions that he had very high averages he was in honors he did all the science courses he had like a 4.0 gpa i literally passed high school because of her which was so lit straight a's love that for me queen of scamming but uh he finished high school which he did we, we saw you know the infamous uh ring light grad photo and it's a very different approach and he always kind of forwards himself as a very organized i grew up really young i moved to la at you know 18 but i paid my own way out through not necessarily only youtube revenue at the time either because you have to remember the brand deals that he had with covergirl before the whole <laughs> ebola hmm, debacle well we're not even going to get into that because i <laughs> This man really said, I'm gonna blow the, I'm gonna blow up the world in five years. Like in five years time, I can somehow hit all the boxes of things that can happen. <laughs> I can have the biggest comeback in history, but also the biggest downfall in history. I can also be the first for me, hi Jane. The first in many ways and uh, both good and bad. He's definitely an interesting, individual in comparison to a standard youtuber like i said the paul brothers and stuff like that because of this kind of professionalism that doesn't normally come with a lot of the younger generation because even think who he hangs out with right he hangs out with tiktokers a lot of them um with a lot of scandals uh bryce hall you know ala bryce hall kind of thing um i honestly don't know most of their names i know who addison ray is kind of uh, <laughs> uh tiktok tiktokers i'm not really into all over the place so i'll tag my tiktok down below if you want to see how i did the eyeshadow and i'll put the products down at the bottom like i always do but back to the tiktokers the tiktok is a like to vine where it was kind of considered a talentless platform where someone can just make these short form snippet videos and gain fame so James Charles comes in after the Vine era. TikTok didn't exist yet, we know. But after the Vine era, as someone who seemed very put together. This is where the ethos, pathos, and logos comes in because ethos refers to the person that is giving the message. And James Charles had a completely different aura and kind of a feeling than everybody else. So his ability to put out messages kind of became elevated compared to his counterparts because of how uh, his, the status that he had created for himself. Now, given the situation with his old assistant saying she had to pull him out of bed and um, shave the booty for Coachella, uh, perhaps that will fall as well. But there is a point with thinking about timing in that statement. So you kind of have to, to figure that out for yourself. And also, I think as everyone does now with James Charles, like to wait it out. Because after looking at 2019, things aren't always how they seem. Now, James Charles also, because of this professionality, tends to be have a better ability to look at things in a legal perspective and be able to gather evidence in his own right, which I think is how he got out of everything in 2019. I'm starting to think that perhaps the things were true. Tinfoil hat time again, like last time. I don't have the tin over here, but like tinfoil hat time, because this is extremely alleged. I think that what happened in 2019 was true, but I think there was no consistent evidence, unlike the TikToks that the young men made, young boys, their children, <laughs> their, their children. In 2019, though, there wasn't concrete evidence like that. And Jeffree Star, like for example, if he had anything, wouldn't release it. So he was able to, uh, I think he probably sent cease and desist for slander. Because with such a catastrophic effect on the internet, you can likely prove monetary loss when you lose like a million subscribers in a couple of days. <laughs> you know, so I believe that he was able to gather enough counter evidence for them to not have a case and, then, and set it up in a way that if they tried to have a case that they could not solidify it enough to go to court. And as a result, he was able to get the higher ground legally and through the reputation on the internet and succeed through that case. That's coming back to the logos, which is logic, which is what James Charles did with his screenshots and receipts and bringing up 
the opposition's validity, which Jeffree Star um, acts a little bit irrationally because he likes to utilize the third component, pathos, which is emotion. And pathos, pathos-based rhetoric is typically the least credible. Um, that's when people are screaming and crying, people tend to not really think that they, what their arguments are important or valid if they're in a kind of a high stakes situation. I'm not pointing any blame at you, it's my fault, it was my convention. I went to a convention, you promised me you knew all of that because you ran conventions. Except for in the case of Tana Mojo, which I might do that video, let me know, because that would be really interesting because she just like throws pathos around like nobody's business and violates like every argument law to ever exist and still gets out of everything. It's incredibly interesting. With James Charles's pathos is 90% of the time very stern, very outright level and logical. And that is an aspect of the male rhetoric that is very important. One week ago, I uploaded a video to my YouTube channel titled Tati. This video was a direct response to the video that Tati Westbrook uploaded to her channel titled By Sister. Before I say anything at all, in this video, I want to make it very, very clear that everything I said in that video in regards to my sentiments towards Tati and my apology, I stand behind 100%. For example, often when women go to teacher's college, they teach them not to heighten the pitch of their voice when they're frustrated with students because if you deter from a stable, uh, from like a stable sound, that people can't take you seriously. James Charles in the first video when he was crying, people didn't take him seriously and that caused him to lose all the subscribers. But to keep a consistent and stern attitude was what saved him in the first place. So he uses logos with this stern pathos to fix the ethos that was destroyed in that million subscriber loss. Now this was two years ago, okay? Now we gotta go to modern contemporary rhetoric in how everything happened with the minors. So Scott's theory of modern contemporary rhetoric is that it goes from the listener to the speaker, then to the world. And this is very consistent in social media because the whole reason why you do anything now is to save face with your audience. Your listeners, the ones that are dedicated to you and the ones that want to contribute to your success and your wealth are the ones that you are going to push the most without question. So going from your listener and then you are now the speaker, you are the second most important, your re reputation with the listener that is above you then contributes to how the world views you. So James Charles' audience recently turning against him and people on YouTube and the other such social media platforms turning against him then trickles down to the worldview which isn't the most favorable and now he's getting these articles written on uh written about him and he's getting these kind of groups of people feeling different ways about him now what we're gonna do actually is break down each of the statements we're gonna read the first one i have it right here on my ipad Trigger warning, obviously, for allegations of, you know, talking to people underage and doing such problematic actions. I am not going to read those kind of more triggering words because they're also not necessary and they have nothing to do with the argument itself. So it says, there's a video going around about me on TikTok and Twitter of a guy calling me a G word and I want to address it right away. So immediately he's doing, he's very stern. That is a very direct, clear, concise sentence. No playing around because stereotypically these other less professional YouTube, um, YouTube celebrities or personalities like to kind of deter around the subject, right? David Dobrik tried to not do this and do that little two minute apology video, however, recently, and that didn't work either. So it's interesting if, to observe that kind of shift that's going on, but if you look at average you know, circa 2019 and earlier YouTuber apologies, there tends to be a lot of dilly-dallying and shift of blame, which we'll get to the shift of blame after, because this is where James Charles' logos tends to fall, is his concern with deterring all the time. A common kind of, honestly, common uh, tends to be a common showing of guilt 
because you can't back yourself up with your own validity of your own actions because there's nothing to go forward with but unfortunately if you admit that you did them admit that you're wrong and put full blame on yourself that in a way too is social suicide so <laughs> it's not really a correct way to go about it necessarily in regards to how you keep the most subscribers and the most views and the most money there is just looking at it from an ethical and moral standpoint anyways we'll continue the accusation that i have g-worded this person is completely false this is doing the hey nod back to last time i'm just going straight forward wrong just like last time when i said they were wrong and i was right because a lot of this is similar language to that very direct nature that he used in that no more lies video i will not ask for sympathy and i will definitely not ask for forgiveness either but i will ask that you watch this entire thing all the way through before forming any further opinions or talking about the story more last week i came across someone on my instagram explorer page saw he followed me and added him on snapchat that's just kind of obviously information the next morning i woke up to several snaps from this person being excited that i added him back saying he loved me and also lewd photos of himself in the shower you already have a contradiction here where he said i actively added him on snapchat but then he's excited that he added me back this statement seems to have been written in kind of a frenzy and a matter of almost a lack of carefulness which i think is because he felt confident in the reputation that he built for himself from 2019. 2019 is so incredibly important in all of his statements here like he's just throwing it back <laughs> in your face all the time and it never stops i asked how old he was right away and he told me he was 18 so i started flirting back again which one happened first adding him on instagram snapchat the photos are the age because every single one of these is labeled as right away this is what I'm saying with this like lack of carefulness of, of an overconfidence in the ethos that he's kind of developed for himself. Again, that kind of reputation he's built from the listener to the audience. The That relationship that he's made, he has such strong confidence in. And I feel like he lacks that kind of carefulness that he had before. In the excitement of meeting someone I thought could potentially be great. Oh, sorry. What? I thought could be potentially great. Oh, that's not grammatically correct. <laughs> I didn't ask for a copy of his ID or passport. I don't even have a, I don't even have a valid, I just can't imagine. I'm like talking to Jane, who's like, let me see that passport. <laughs> I know that's not something like to joke about. I just think that's so silly. Like I'm, you should be on like FaceTime, you're like flipping the, <laughs> yes, James, I got my passport. <laughs> God, I just can't imagine. Like, the whole point, people keep reiterating this, and I, I agree completely. If you need to show them your passport, like, you, if you're at the... If, if you send in your ass on Snapchat has the same security as crossing a border, you gotta check your shit, okay? Like, honestly. <laughs> if, like, me going to America to, like, cop my second dose, uh is the same security as talking to james charles obviously there's a problem here they shouldn't none of these people even look 18. do i look 18? depends on who you ask um i don't know i have good cheekbones i don't know i find i definitely look like i'm not in high school anymore because i kind of have that like more mature face shape but Jaden doesn't look like he's in high school like i wouldn't clock Jaden for 16 there's a difference as soon as you're as you're eight as you're like 19 20 you tend to kind of you look a little bit different you kind of your face matures and stuff and your kind of your final bone structure sets it so what i'm saying is is the none of these these kids look 14 16 ish like and i find i look young and i still think i look significantly older than most of these people and i'm just saying that that's such a problem and him saying like that that's not the problem is like oh i'm sorry i was like catfishing or not catfishing i was hunting for like super young dudes Oop, didn't show the passport is just oh yeah is ridiculous anyways it is now clear based based on the video he uploaded he was taking photos of me with another device and had an ulterior motive from the beginning 
this is taking advantage of the sympathy he gathered from before as well as just human sympathy. I have power that people want from me so everyone wants to take it away from me. This poor me and this uh, plea to the plea to emotion sorry excuse me the plea to emotion fallacy because no one should be able to so easily take that away from you from your own carelessness from status and power come responsibility you are the speaker with your listener is above you in the relationship of modern rhetoric you know that your whole life why am i clapping like this your whole life depends on how other people perceive you every cent you have every what does he have dogs okay he doesn't teslas i don't know the <laughs> gucci <laughs> i you can tell i don't i'm not a i'm not rich you know every thing that he has is based off of the relationship that he has this parasocial relationship that he has that's why it's so incredibly important for him to insist that the power is trying to be taken away and that he is the victim despite the people that he's associated with being children i am angry so i'm going to gloss my lips are getting crusty because i'm yelling too much okay there we go this is also the clear essence gloss if anyone was wondering Later in the day, he said a few things that made me question the validity of his original age answer, and when I asked him to confirm his age once again, he admitted he was 16. <laughs> I, I, I'm very curious as to what makes him sound 16 all of a sudden. Because I feel like how you approach your initial introduction to somebody if you're obviously over 18 there's a consistency and i just there's just such a lack of any like care here and any cons valid concern it's just like he he said a few things that made me question the validity of his original age if you refer to the TikTok, those statements sound like when he was worried about sending him his ass pics back <laughs> like when you i can't put up the tiktok because they're getting the videos taken down but when people know what i'm talking about and i'm sure that it's up somewhere the kid when james charles started coming back for him it was literally because he didn't want to send photos back so he's he's so powerful that he thinks if you don't want to send me back a pic of your booty because it's child, you know, CP. I'm just saying, any sort of pre-existing knowledge on this situation before you go into it really gives this statement a different light. I told them I was really uncomfortable and apologized for flirting, but insisted on continuing... Oh my God, this is really terrible. But he insisted on continuing talking, saying it would be our little secret He's a fan of mine and would never tell anyone. Again, the inflicting the victim card of, I was so uncomfortable that I committed a crime for my own carelessness. There's a reason why charges such as like criminal negligence exist. I'm not necessarily saying this is criminal negligence, but I'm saying not caring for uh, to such a dangerous point that it puts other people in bad positions is itself a thing that can be charged. So him saying that in any situation where he didn't necessarily have this like crazy horrible intention makes him completely innocent of everything is not true it's just bullshit like that's just not how life works i don't know what to tell you i i am a year younger than james charles i think something like that we graduated high school at the same time i know that so yeah he would be a year older than me because i went to high school in quebec and he graduated in grade 11 instead of grade 12. so i graduated at 16. i'm a year younger than him with less exposure to kind of these different types of situations and I see that as obvious because I know a lot of people that are commenting on these kinds of things tend to be 
you know, 25, 26. Like Chris Clemens, I think, is in his almost in his early 30s or he's almost 30. So there's a lot of these people that are like several years older than him. Take it from someone who's younger than him and still understands that, right? I don't know. I just think it's kind of obvious. I told him I wasn't okay with this. He started getting upset. And at this point, I unfriended him. Again, that just seems like a straight lie based on the TikTok where you just see James Charles spam calling him. You trying to get the situation solved by harassing somebody doesn't sort it out and you can't blame them for getting upset that you're harassing them. If that's not true, this is still wrong. And I feel like that's pretty simple in my opinion. I haven't spoken since. I'm not victim blaming or victimizing myself either, simply sharing what happened and what happened was not okay. Let me reread the sentence. I'm gonna reread like a couple sentences here to compare that to I'm not victim blaming him or victimizing myself either, simply sharing what happened. I asked how old he was right away and he told me he was 18 so I started flirting back. That is blaming him for lying immediately. So that's victim blaming already. In the excitement of meeting someone I thought could be potentially great, I didn't ask for a copy of his ID or passport. Look at me being lied to. So he's victimizing himself. Just those two sentences, you already know that that's... Like, he wrote this like you don't remember uh, what came before. Like, y'all are like, we're built like that fish from Nemo, you know, uh, Dory, you know, we're built like we have instant memory loss. After false allegations like this in the past, bringing back his previous validity from 2019, uh, I would never knowingly engage with anyone underage and put my life on the line for a few Snapchats because situations like this, instead of taking someone's word for it, I will now ask for an ID or passport. I have already iterated why that's stupid. Yeah, next one. Accountability is something that I've spoken about a number of times in the past. This relates back to Gabby Hannon's use of buzzwords and how they're trying to spring a certain relation and reaction. This accountability is interesting word for him to use because I feel like by now he would have been aware that that word has been just completely like crumpled up and thrown in the trash by his ex-friend uh, Tana Mojo because now the word, accountabil the word accountability is literally a meme. In my most recent video, I spoke about and took accountability for my part in conversations I had with a few individuals. A few. Before it was one. That's another thing. The other one, he's deterring all responsibility and he's saying this one guy's lying. But now he's out here, he's like, oh, well, there are a few of them were true. I don't know, it's just so wild to me. It's like, you look at the at the two statements compared to each other. That's it. Again, this thing of, I feel like James Charles has this confidence that he's smarter than everyone and that no one has a memory retention to the level of his. So when I read this, I immediately got angry because I remember the statement from before. So, I spoke about and took accountability for my part in conversations I had with a few individuals who told me they were over 18. As I said in that video, I can't show change overnight, but will over time. That is definitely just taking a snippet of kind of criticism from people from drama channels and stuff that wanted people like Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star to kind of show these changes. The problem is, is that those issues that people are demanding change from, a lot of them are from a long time ago. So that's where they're like, at this point, things should be better. James Charles is trying to use that like time gap that people are looking for to negate the issue at hand problem is is you need to stop that immediately <laughs> you are committing crimes in real time it's not the same thing as having ignorance or being insensitive that is something that that's a mood thing that you need to kind of adjust over time you need to learn you need to educate yourself you need to stop committing crimes fat live okay <laughs> like you to stop yesterday since posting that video, many other people have come forward with a series of misleading stories and false allegations that have been reported on by many people, creators, and news outlets. Sure. No, but sure. Bringing up false ones doesn't negate that real ones exist. 
if you murder somebody, if you murder one person, but someone said you murdered three people, you're still a murderer. Does that make sense? You still came for minors. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, my legal team has begun taking action against those that have spread misinformation and are creating completely fake stories. This is appeal to authority. This is being like, I look at this, like, look at this legal god. Um, they, I have, like, they have an authority beyond my hands and yours, so I'm gonna drop the hammer on you. That's a really empty threat, too, because slander is almost impossible to prove. I do think he was able to kind of get some stuff with Tati because of the scale of her influence and the scale of his influence combined. However, somebody like a little, like a kid on TikTok, he can't prove monetary loss for. That's not an easy kind of, most of these fall through. So, like, I mean, don't sue me because I don't want to, but <laughs> these kinds of threats are very empty, especially especially once you cross borders, but I don't know, and most of these kids are American, I'd imagine, all of, if not all of them. Everything happens in America for some reason, <laughs> except like J-Station. <laughs> for some reason, we claim J-Station, uh, yeah. Yes, my legal team has begun taking action against those that have spread misinformation and are creative, completely fake stories, and this has gone too far. What's interesting is the no acknowledgement of the real stories that everyone knows exist that he admitted to prior. Again, this like, like he can talk like you forget everything he just said is just a very interesting use of his logic and his, it's a combination of his logic and his ethos of like, look how I've always been able to prove things, so you just have to take this with a grain of salt. These stories have caused many of my long-term partners to receive considerable negative... <laughs> These stories have caused many of my long-term partners to receive considerable negative feedback, one of them being Morphe. I've loved every moment of working together and am beyond grateful for what we have created together. That being said, I reached out to them and we mutually agreed to wind down James Charles X Morphe, which is my only project with them. That's an interesting nod to people thinking that his brand was with Morphe, which I think is really it's just like a weird thing to put in there. However, there is a complete disregard for any sort of responsibility. Everyone lying is why people were mad at Morphe, not the confirmed allegations that I admitted to, to messaging minors and getting booty pics from teenagers have no contribution at all. Why? me don't know like it's just it's just so compelling to have someone with such an inflated ego like i i feel like even gabby hannah could be like oh i was really mean so people got mad you know like like kenza cosmetics at least she was like oh yeah i screwed up like manage your expectations but i did like it was me that told you he's like this had nothing to do with me and everyone was just shitting on more for no reason i just <laughs> I continue to take time away to learn, grow, and listen, and look forward to coming back one day in the future as a better version of myself. Press X for doubt. Because I feel like if you faced one of the biggest internet catastroph catastrophes in history, and you're still like this, that there's no saving you. That's just my gamer theory. Finally, looking at the video he made recently about his assistant that I watched on Twitter... I am being cornered and have to make yet another public statement. I know people are sick of these. I don't blame you. I'm not even going to bother writing out like a whole notes out thing today. And was appalled by, I think the only thing I'm going to bring up because this video is already quite long, is that he constantly brings up his personal validity that he has built up over time to weaponize against her. He always weaponizes all of his best aspects negate any sort of wrongdoing and force it upon someone with less power than him even though as i've mentioned over and over again the listener is actually above the speaker in modern rhetoric and as a result the internet is not ceasing to turn against him i have a couple clips i'll pop in um like i'll splice them like i did with the gabby hannah video of him kind of comparing why he's more right than her and he has better reputation than her and that she's weaponizing it against him. He's a victim alike to these statements. I will do it right here. 
to talk to professionals and most importantly to try to help better the situation that happened recently and we feel as though the situation that I was in is being taken advantage of and I feel as though I'm being blackmailed because I wanted to keep the pregnant out of the steps for her uh, and the fact that it's literally an ongoing litigation uh, but she's now speaking about it which is just perfect time considering everything else that's going on paid, all of which are untrue. I stand behind the fact that they are very, very well taken care of. The fact that this is like even attempting to become a narrative makes me feel like sick to my stomach because it is wildly, wildly untrue and I am so grateful for the people around me. I can get back like the wages that she feels like she should have been paid for her work, which I wish were the truth because in reality this suit is actually for hundreds of thousands of dollars. On Twitter, about how she just settled another case recently, so this is clearly a thing. Absolutely ridiculous, absurd, untrue, defamatory, just the, the craziest claims you could ever imagine. Uh, in my opinion, it can attempt to pressure me into making a much, much higher settlement offer. This is just perfect convenient timing as well considering this past weekend my old twitter account which i have not accessed since 2016 and only has one tweet i guess was hacked like i were in some universe to make this ungodly amount of settlement money if i was to pay it this is a very very different situation and it's a court that is not on my side right now I feel yeah, so that's my video on James Charles. My mouth is dry because I'm yelling. Um, say goodbye to Squish Gang. Jaden, wave, wave goodbye. And I'll uh, I'll uh, see y'all in the next one. Uh, let me know if anybody wants me to do anything. I'm thinking uh, Shane Dawson's The Circus sounds really fun. That like eight or whatever notes thing on Twitter. Like I said, maybe the Tana Mojo video that she made about TanaCon after the Shane Dawson documentary because no one talks about that. So let me know. I hope everyone has a great day and I will pop in my meme at the end as usual and have fun. Bye. <sighs> oh, what? Why is my Apple pen on the floor? What is this? Look behind you. What? Hi, sisters! Ah!